A warm welcome to Property Summits. As ever, I have with me a team of hugely experienced property experts with a combined property portfolio worth a staggering £1.5 billion. Together, we'll be taking a closer look at the latest developments in the property world. I'm Emma Birchley, and joining me today are John Howard, who knows a thing or two about the property business, having bought and sold nearly 4,000 houses, apartments and developments over four decades in the industry. Richard Bush is a man who turned a personal interest in crowdfunding and peer-to-peer -peer lending into a professional passion, co-founding Crowd Lords, which pulls resources to enable more people to benefit from investing in property. Also with me is Tony Gimple, who has a direct and no-nonsense approach when delivering advice to buy-to-let landlords, investors and developers, whether that's on tax, accountancy, finance or succession planning. Joining me too is Paul Mahoney, best-selling author and serial entrepreneur. He's the founder of Nova Financial Group, providing property investment advice with a particular focus on the buy-to-let sector. And last but not least, we have Nicholas Woolwork, an investor, developer and property mentor who makes the most of his expertise in his role as CEO of the world's largest international property forum, providing advice on how to make money through property. Hello to you all. Hi. So now we're going to look at joint ventures. Good thing? A great thing. I mean, over, my, over the years, I've had joint venture partners um, who are still talking to me after 35 Excellent. years, which isn't a bad effort. And I can ring them up and say, do you want to do this deal? Uh, so I've always been um, a, you know, f looking for joint venture partners to support my developments. Um, and over the years, I've had some, I said, some great joint venture partners. Um, there's a few tricks with them, or not tricks, advice I would give people with joint ventures. And that is, if you're looking for a joint venture partner, uh, always, you know, always try and uh, under-promise and over-deliver. Always try uh, and make sure that you don't pester them every five minutes. You want a, a professional relationship with them. They're not your friends. It's a business partnership. You don't need to be taking them out for dinner every five minutes and going on holiday with them and all the rest of it. But you have to respect each other. It's a bit like a football manager and a chairman. A football manager needs to respect the chairman of the football club and vice versa. If they don't, you know what happens. The manager goes. But you're in for the long haul, aren't but you, potentially? In, because if, you've got to still be getting on with a, them, potentially. If it's a, if it's a good relationship, yes. like I've had with mine, then it can go on for a long, long time. As I've proved, and many other people, Nicholas has a lot of joint venture partners as well, and Paul does in his business, and, 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 you know, and, and Richard, and so on. And I think it's very important to have that relationship, um, but it needs to be on a professional basis, in my opinion. What is a relationship, John? Describe what, a joint, what you mean by joint venture. So well, know. first of all, what I would, well, a joint venture, normally I would find the property deal and my joint venture partner would, for, would find the finance uh, to do the deal. And I've been very spoilt over the years that I've had some you know, great joint venture partners who have done exactly that. They haven't interfered on my side and I haven't interfered on their side. And it's really important that you have defined roles. The last thing you want is, is um, ambiguity ambiguity, uh, and also you know a, a good example of that be recently I've done a deal with my wife on a property deal <laughs> goodness me you know every every dinner time, good luck to her good luck with that every dinner time I get asked the same questions how's it going every two minutes you know and I can understand why but you know we've got defined roles and uh, in the house as well as out the house by the way but you know we've got defined roles and actually you don't need to be doing that because you should trust each other's part. I, I'm, basic, I'm basically, the, the, I'm basically the, the, the assistant manager in the whole thing. <laughs> of course, suddenly, you know, the whole family were involved and they're the experts and I, what do I know, you know? So, but but it, that's just an example where you mustn't start interfering in other people's side of things, really. If, if, at the end of the day, if the, develop, if the partnership doesn't work because there's too much interference, then just stay, get, the, get the job done pay everyone out and say thank you very much. So are the best partnerships where you haven't got two people or, or, or however many doing the same thing, one brings something to the party and Absolutely. the other brings yeah. something else? Yeah, I think so. I, th I think the best working relationships are where you know, the two bring, bring their own experiences and talents to the table. Um, <clears throat> but I think that's really important that you do have a good working relationship. You know, anybody who I've partnered with in the past, I would only do that if I know I can get along with them for a start. That's always a good start. Yeah, yeah property's yeah, a people business, isn't it? Absolutely. Mm. You, say, you, know, you say that 
or people say that you're investing in the person as much as the deal. Yeah. And, and of course, what's happened recently is I've, I've, I've sort of turned it right round and, and now I'm, you know, I'm a joint venture in terms of investor, in terms of I'm looking for, I'm looking for aspirational young developers who, who want me to invest my money into their deal and share the profit with them. Do you so then have to sit back and go yeah. crack yeah. on? Is that not hard for you? Actually, <laughs> I'm, I'm, <laughs> thank you. Well, I am a delegator, so actually I don't mind that. It's quite nice having, ha well, having the yeah. deals brought to me. And with my experience uh, and everything else, it, you know, hopefully I can help them through the deal. And the way we structured it is they don't actually put really any money in themselves. So it, it, it's, it's good fun and, uh, and I'm enjoying it. But it's very important to, to get the rules right from the start. Yeah, I think a JV means different things to different people. You know, you could be lending money or you could be the lender of the money. Um, so I think it depends on the situation, uh, really. Yeah, you, depends on the deal. You've got to be careful not to confuse joint venture uh, with VC. Uh, and so often, you know... What is VC? Venture capital or Viet Cong if you come from... Other, you know, <laughs> if you're old enough. But the, the V in VC can often stand for vulture and not venture. So... If you are going to do a JV, yes, you've got to get on with the person, but you've certainly got to understand their motivation, that they have as much intellectual or financial skin in however you structure it in the game you know, as They're you. They're as invested in it. They are, yeah. they, they've got to be invested in it. Otherwise, it, it, what do they say, you know, business is business, up to a point. Uh, but, you know, if you don't trust them, you can't get on with them, you haven't done your due diligence on them, you know, and they're using other people's money and still have to, they've got to report to others, then it can be a bit of a recipe for disaster. I, I mean, at the moment, um, there's websites littered with people who have invested in a joint venture relationship in the wrong way. Uh, and have been caught out and are going to lose a lot of money. I mean, there's a number of ed property educators, for a start, asking their, <laughs> their, their mentorees or, uh, you know, or the people they're educating for money to put into their deals. Well, surely, if, why on earth are they doing that? You know, ask yourself, why do they need my money? Uh, and then some of them have been giving it to people without any legal agreement, which is absolutely crazy. Well, that's a, that's a good point. I mean, the legal agreement is important. It's important to, it's like writing a will. You don't want to yeah. rip off the plaster and no. talk about the difficult subjects. No. But in a joint venture, you have to do that up front and you have to draw up the right absolutely, contract yeah. to it, cover every scenario. It, it's so important. Someone said to me many years ago, one of my first backers ever said to me, John, we've got a, th and that was a 30 page agreement, which cost a lot of money with the lawyers. Well, I'm not suggesting you need to go to that then. He said, it sits <coughs> in the drawer. It never comes out unless, it, if it comes out, we've got a problem. Yeah. But it no sits in the drawer and hopefully it will never come out. And that's actually pretty good advice, yeah. I think. Um, but you need but to have everything tied up. Everything, everything needs, needs to be tied up. And, and you, what, the problem with that, of course, is sometimes you start arguing about issues that are never going to arise mm. while you do the agreement. So you have got to be a bit careful with that. But Tony, from your point of view, structuring it financially for the investor who's putting the money in is obviously really important sometimes, isn't it? <laughs> Ultimately, that's why they're investing. Uh, but you've also got to structure it in such a way that there's real equity for all partners. That's not stocks and shares, A class or B. You know. So you have to know why each party is coming to the table, yeah. you know, how much of what, by when, by whom. And the big question, which nobody seems to ask, is, well, what, why? Why are you doing this? Mm -hmm. Are you doing it because you absolutely need to, and if this deal doesn't happen, your history? Or are you completely and utterly financially independent? But that's how you get your jollies. You, know, you enjoy investing in other people. Yeah. So it, it, it's the why more than anything. You, you touched on a key point, uh, the contract, the detail. And the minute you get the lawyers involved, and bear in mind I used to run you know, a law firm, Big law firm. Sometimes you get fee justification. You know, they will bring up things that you know but have chosen to ignore yeah. just to keep it going. So understand who you're getting into bed with and why. Look at your get out of jail free cards and what happens if it all goes horribly wrong. So always look at the worst first. Yeah. At least that way. If, if you both choose to ignore it, you know, you, you know what you're ignoring, as opposed to suddenly you know, you, you've got your head in your hands and wondering, 
how the hell did that happen? Right. And make sure that you, if your business partner, whoever it happens to be, JV, you know, drops dead tomorrow. Yeah. You know, That's the biggest thing for me. Um, it can be a range. There's not an extra fee for that. If someone actually, dead. I know it sounds crazy, yeah. Richard, but if someone, I'm not looking at you because you're about my age <laughs> and, you, and you smoke probably <coughs> still, but what I'm saying is, you know, if someone drops down, you know, if someone yeah. genuinely drops down dead, yeah. That is a major problem if yeah, you're in yeah. the middle of a de event, a development. Yeah. Yeah. What do you do? What What's do you do? Succession Their planning. assets could exactly. be frozen. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And if they're putting money into the project, that, mm. means, that is a major problem. So you, you may want some key man insurance. That's not yeah. a bad way of sorting yeah. it out. Yeah. Um, you may want that, but, but, but it's so important to structure it right. How, Tony, would you, this is free advice, everyone, including yep. us, probably. Yep. No, so, Tony, <laughs> how would you... Self-advice. Self-advice. How would you set up... Would you set up an SPV every time on a new development where they, both parties say it's a 50-50 split, they both have 50% of the shares, or what would you do? Share, probably a shareholder's agreement, oh, would you, Tony, good. in yeah. that scenario? Grief. Well, you, you, you're going to need a shareholder's agreement regardless. Yeah. You know? Should it be 50-50? Should it be a new, new company? Should it be part of you know, a group structure? Should it be a way of risk managing? <sighs> There's really there is no. Well, shall I suggest how I do it, and then Nicholas, do, and yeah. then also how Paul does it, and how yeah. because it's important from your point of view. Because funding, if you're not happy with the structure of the of of of, yeah. of, of, of the deal yeah. in terms of the, the the limited company or whatever. So what we do, if we're investing in any in anybody's uh, development, uh, they own the shares 100% in a, in this case. We, we, we encourage them to have an SPV company and we invest the money into their company as a loan. Yep. Um, and, but they own the company 100%. And the reason we want to do that is because they may want to leave their money in the company. They may want to do the next deal on their own without us, which is absolutely fine. As long as we get our money out and our profit out, that's fine for us. But that's how I like to that's also set good them up. For the <coughs> is that, is for the that Yeah, is that good? For, yeah. yeah, because if I'm doing a joint venture with you and you're providing the money, yeah. I have to source the debt. Yes. And it's my personal As soon as you can, please, Richard. Yeah, well, yeah. but it's my personal guarantee on the debt, not yes. yours. Yep. And so from the finance person, the senior lender, they want the SPV to be owned by the people that are providing yes. personal guarantees. So if you're providing the equity as a JV, yep. they don't really want you as part of that, no. that, that entity. So no. that's a good structure. For uh, and you hear about skin in the game. Have you got any skin in the game? Do you want to explain? Yeah, it just means that the person lending the money, oh, the person borrowing the money, sorry, I always get those terms interchanged and mixed up, the person borrowing the money has got some of their own money or substantial assets, assets on the line through a personal guarantee or yeah. whatever it might be. So if things go wrong, they can't just walk away. Well, what we're really saying, it, it needs to hurt. We don't want them to just mm. walk, you know, it's not, probably, they probably would never will just walk away if it went wrong anyway. But the whole point of having a personal guarantee, which is very serious and people shouldn't take out a personal guarantee, give a personal guarantee, I should say, unless they're very confident, they understand all, everything about it and they've taken advice. But without that, and they're without them putting any money in because they've gone and found the deal, it's unlikely that you're going to get a backer, investor, whatever you want to call them, a joint venture partner. Paul's got a good phrase for this about personal guarantees. What's your view on personal guarantees? A good phrase? Yeah, it was, the phrase was, oh, no, it was one I'm, I'm going to nick off you right, if you don't mind. So I'll use it now, but yeah. I've given you credit at least. A credit. Maybe you credit. Normally, yeah. Yeah. It was normally I take all the good ideas. So <laughs> it, it was essentially, um, you know, a personal guarantee is as good as using your own cash. If you're going to do a deal, right? Yeah. right and you haven't you got your, your own, own cash, cash. That is a personal that guarantee because you're risking your own cash. Yeah. So you know, there's more to it than that, of course, um, and you don't want to lose your house. But at the end of the day, personal guarantee in this day and age, you know, finances since 2008 got tighter and tighter and tighter, more regulation. Yeah. Uh, and, and you can't get away with no personal guarantees this day and age. But you need to get the right team around you and, and have the experience before you go into too big a deal um, so that you're not risking everything. So do joint ventures um, allow the potential for someone who's really new to the property market to join forces with someone who has the experience and ease them through that yeah. entry into the world? Without question, and I'll go further than that, in, in some banks uh, and, and funders like Richard may not lend to a developer, a first-time developer, if they don't have a backer and someone with more experience sitting alongside them. So that's how important it is, really, yeah, isn't it? It's a good it? way to build up the track record, isn't it? But it's not cheap. 
I mean, we need to bear that in mind. In, the, in, in exchange for providing all the equity, you might take half of the profits. So. 30%, yeah. So, so it's going to cost the developer a lot of money. So that you have to bear that in mind when he decides whether or not to do a JV or whether to raise equity or raise debt elsewhere. Yes, uh, and of course, the way you <coughs> raise um, debt for people, that gives them the, op the, the option not having to do a joint venture partner, of course, in many ways, yeah. to a point. Well, you don't, do you yeah. lend the full equity, or is it, or is it We do, we do JV, do full JV, JV so projects. You do a full JV, okay, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but not never for the first time. So the first project we would always do equity investment, and then once they've proven, then we might do. A what JV. about the third project? We, we don't touch the third project. <laughs> what, what about the three thousand third project? <laughs> 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 on, on that point about about the agreements and making sure that's watertight, I think that becomes even more important when it's with family or friends. And a lot of people don't do contracts when it's with a family or friend because they think, well, we get along great, so everything's going to be fine. But, you know, people's priorities change a lot when we're talking hundreds of thousands or millions of pounds involved. And if something does go wrong, that's why you need that contract of withdrawal, like what John said. I think the contracts are critical. I, I, you know, we wouldn't do an investment without the legal contracts Absolutely. being... being yeah. I think, going, if I may just quickly, Tony, going back to a point you made about the exit or if you died... Having multiple exits, I think, is really important. Yep. You know, if you're looking at any deal in property full stop, any deal, you want two or three well, exits. You, that if you the first one goes wrong, you've got plan B You want to have an out before you can C. have it in, and yeah. you want to know if it doesn't work out one way, how are we going to get our money? How are we going to get out of it? And that's what the JV agreement yeah. should start from, is what do we do in these scenarios? And there's one key point that nobody's touched on. You know, okay, so somebody's falling off their perch, and you end up dealing with their husband, wife, whatever, whatever who have got no interest whatsoever. They may not have a will, you know, so suddenly everything's frozen. But more to the point, you know, d dying too soon, what about living too long and you, know, you go crazy than any of us clearly already are? One of the most undersubscribed uh, risk management safety valves is, is lasting powers of attorney for, so for somebody's property and financial affairs. Uh, so, you, you, so are you saying we should have one? Yeah, absolutely. You should have one. Because the, right. the court of protection, which used to be known as the Masters of Lunacy, which gives you some <laughs> idea, actually goes back to Tudor times, is what happens if you've lost the plot? Yeah. Uh, you, you, you can't sign or you're out the country. Well, you just carry yeah. on going like John has and <laughs> somehow, no, somehow this, yeah. cobbles his way through well, life. And gets yeah, get older and older and older, thank you. Yeah. 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 Uh, um, so if somebody's lost the capacity make financial yeah. decisions. That's a major problem. It is a huge problem and I can pretty much guarantee that out of all the JVs I've seen or business arrangements, there's nothing in the contract which says what happens if X or Y no. has lost the plot. So you need to get that done early, do you? You need to get it done. You should have it anyway, regardless. You know, get it done, register it with the Court of Protection. You can do it all online. It's not expensive you know, and at least you know You've got somebody who can speak and act on your behalf if you're physically or mentally incapable of doing so yourself. And yeah. that, that presumably stops stuff getting frozen at, at the point if there was no will or well, there was no, 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 no power of attorney. No, death is different. Yeah, you're gone and it, then it's into it's probate and everything. Right, okay, okay. But you still be there's a power of attorney <coughs> for financial affairs, so presumably they can yeah. continue to act in not the capacity of not post death. Right. Not post death. Not post death. Really? Okay, right. Didn't yeah. realize that. And it's really, really critical that whoever and you have it separate for business affairs. Make sure you've got the, you've got somebody you trust and, and they trust. That's such a good point. And going but going back to these joint uh, the joint venture and the share of the profit. You know, if you've got a aspira and we have them, yeah, aspirational mm. young not no. young, not always young, but no. aspirational people who want to get on in life and they've got the opportunity to make uh, you know perhaps half a million pounds out of a property deal yes. and they're virtually putting nothing in but a bit of risk and a bit of hurt and so on, admittedly, and, and they're, but they're, you know, they, they have the support and everything else to, to make that money or not do the deal at all, I think it's a no-brainer, yeah. yeah. total no-brainer. Now, sometimes you hear about this phrase, angel investor. What does that mean? Well, it's really an angel investor um, I would say, um, is, is actually similar to everything else we're talking about, really. Yeah. The, 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 one, the, one thing, um, the one thing I would say is, in certain cases, and different depends what business you're in, but you can get tax relief from the government um, on, on certain types. You can't do it on property, yeah, EIS. unfortunately. EIS, where you, 
where you get 40% tax relief by investing the money. And I've done that on a, num on a few <coughs> schemes with most of them. I haven't done very well, actually, in commercial business, but there we go. But I've, you do it because you're advised to save some money sometimes, tax-wise. You've got to be really careful when looking at EIS, SCIS. Yeah. What, do they, what do they stand for? Um, enterprise Investment Scheme and Small yeah. Enterprise yeah. Investment Scheme. Uh, it almost ties in with some of the things on the capital allowances, etc. You have to do it for the right reasons. Yeah. Uh, I did them for the wrong reasons, really, which saved a bit of tax and actually. Uh, and, and quite often these businesses are, are startups. You yeah. know, it might be a tech startup or it might be yeah. you know, that type of thing, mightn't it, yeah. Richard? Yeah. Uh, and, and, yeah. and, and of course, they are a big risk. Whereas property, on the whole, you don't get that tax relief. But it, it, because it's bricks and mortar, well, it might be earth in the ground that's going to be bricks and mortar, to be fair, um, is, is perceived as a much safer bet. That's yeah. good to do this. I think you need to be very careful of anything that is focused as a tax efficient investment. You know, before I was in property, I, I, was, I was in more sort of broad investments. And in my experience, most of those schemes fail because they're based upon the tax benefits. And that's why mm. people are doing them. Yeah. Um, that's what I, I fell into <coughs> that. I fell into that. Yeah. And losses in particular, because you can offset the losses. You can actually sell a business. Uh, in order to crystallise a loss mm. because you've got tax breaks on it previously. Yeah. 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 So, so be so careful. What, what are the big no-nos then? If you had to say one, each of you say one thing that you mustn't do when you're thinking about joining forces with someone. Well, can I start first? Because then, then <laughs> 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 it's easy if you yeah, go first, first, isn't it? I jumped in there, didn't I? Emma, Good sorry job. about that. So what I would say is whoever you are going to be working with in any shape or form, do a, one, a financial search on them and then go on the internet and check them out because some of the people who are investing with some people that I know uh, across the property industry and beyond, you'd never touch with a barge pole if you did a search on them and found out you know, whether they've been bankrupt, whether they've had CCJs against them, county court judgments against them. You, wouldn't, you just wouldn't touch them with a barge pole, yet people still do. It's unbelievable. Because they've talked a good game. Probably. They've made an excuse as to why, you know, why that's happened. Um, and, and some person, sometimes you can be unfortunate and you can lose everything and come back. But the, the ones I'm talking about are more serial, you know, if you get my meaning. Yeah. Anyone else? Top tips? I would just say choose the, the, the person or the company correctly. You know, you've got a bit of work with those people. Like I think Tony mentioned earlier, about venture capitalists, not vulture capitalists. You know, if you go to the wrong firm, the first hint of a, a, a one in 5,000 clauses, and they're there actually to take that asset off you and take all the profit. You know, and, and there are lenders out there that are dangerous, and they're there to actually property invest. You do all the hard work at the last minute, pull the plug. You have to be extremely careful who you're dealing with. Make sure it's a fair, it's a fair relationship. Yeah. Mm. I think, you know, if we're talking property development, obviously the deal is very important. You might have the best partner in the world, but if the deal's no good, you're not mm. going to make any money. Good point. Paul. I think a lot of people force deals as well. You know, they, 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 they really mm. want to do something, so yeah. they try to, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, I was ne just going to say quite a rude term there, but I was trying to think of something yeah. else. <coughs> you know, they try to... Spot on. We get this all the time where people bring roll a deal the proverbial to and, it, and it's not <laughs> good enough. And I said, look, we want to invest in you, but go and find a better deal. Uh, and it's so important to be able to walk away from a deal if it's not good enough. Yeah. You're defined by the deals you don't do, not the deals you do do. <coughs> well, some of the best deals you do are the ones you don't do. Someone very famous who's just been, was a president and no longer president of America said that in 1988. Wise man, such a wise man. Why such a wise man? <laughs> <laughs> but I suppose as much as there He's are done risks... Right in property. As much as there are risks of, of, of joining forces with someone, what we're learning is that actually you can gain an enormous amount, uh, not just financial backing or if you're the other side of it, the, the deal that someone's found. It's, it's shared knowledge, isn't it? Emma, it's shared knowledge and you, have, and you can only be a specialist in, 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 in one thing on the whole. I admire these people who can buy different businesses and make millions out of each one and sell them and do it again and again and again. And at the end of the day, it, it's so important to, to, to realise what your strengths and re realise your weaknesses. And I would not have been, I would not have done bought and sold and developed or whatever, nearly 4,000 properties without my joint venture partners I've had. Without them, I, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't have done half what I've done. And I think that's very important to understand. So just to, to round things up, 
if you hadn't been, been in a joint venture before and you were quite keen to find investors, where do you start? You probably already know them. You probably already know them, okay. Yeah. Almost certainly within, what, that six degrees of separation, you already know who's going to invest in your business. And I suppose, if it, do you need a JV or should you actually go down a more traditional route and borrow the money? And then it's you can't just borrow up to it all. you. Tony, you can't borrow it all. You'd never be in a situation where you have to borrow it all. And if it was that easy, we'd all be filling uh, our boots, yeah. buying everything that <coughs> ever came for sale. The, the, the key is understand your motivation for why you're looking for you know, development or a JV or bank borrowing or crowdfunding. And when you've found someone, you know, preferably through some kind of recommendation or personal knowledge, yes, I agree. Yeah. You know, ask them that key question. Why? Why are you doing this? And you know, look in the whites of their eyes, which you can't really do on Zoom, you know, and know whether you've got a live one there or not. And you yeah, do all the background and due deal, but at the end of the day, it comes down to, yeah, do, you, yeah, do you feel lucky, punk? Yeah. <laughs> Is this a real person? Yeah. And if not, walk. Yeah. And find and find yeah. one that is. Yeah. Excellent. All right then. Fantastic advice, as ever, from you all. Thank you very much. Um, hopefully, you will have picked up some magnificent tips for your next joint venture. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. See you next time on Property Summits. <laughs>